Welcome back, Witchers! I'm here to bring you another in-depth look at Monster Slayer's battle mechanics. In this episode, we are covering player attacks. Specifically, we will answer questions concerning the individual properties of fast and strong attacks such as speed, damage, and which monsters you should be using each of these attacks against. As a spoiler, depending on your playstyle and skill levels, the game's suggestions on which attacks to use are actually not always the best. We'll talk about why that is. We'll start with some simple tables to see some raw numbers, and then I'll showcase some battles side by side to compare different playstyles to demonstrate how each type of play fares in similar situations. Hopefully, there's a little something in here for everyone. Before I start, if you haven't watched my previous video, don't worry. What you need to know is that all monster swings are on the same set timer, which is about four and a half seconds. But if you haven't seen it and you do have the time, watch that one first, and this video will make more sense. All right, enough intro, let's jump right in. First, let's review some numbers and properties of fast and strong attacks. Without any biasing modifiers, a fast attack will do half the damage of a strong attack. Critical strikes deal about twice as much damage as a strong attack, and a perfect critical will deal three times the damage. As far as speed goes, the minimum time between back-to-back -back strong attacks is about two-thirds of a second, and the time between back-to-back -back fast attacks is just under a third of a second. There's a very important caveat to these speeds though, and this is where your personal playstyle comes in. If you're like I was before working on these videos, you might still be spam swiping in only one direction to get your strong attacks rolling out smoothly. If this sounds familiar, you might be wasting your time using strong attacks at all. NANI? It's true. To see why, let's look at some charts. Here's a very basic simulation of the damage you can deal between monster swings. To make the sims a little easier, the time intervals are at one third of a second even though fast attacks can actually come out a little bit faster, and I have set fast attack damage to 50 and strong attack damage to 100. Both fast and strong simulations start with a strong attack because every time you idle long enough, the game defaults your next swing to a strong attack. On the left, we have strong attack spam if you swipe rapidly in one direction, and on the right, we have fast attack spam going back and forth on the screen very quickly. From this chart, we can see that if you are spamming strong attacks by swiping in one direction, which yields about one attack per second, or a max of four attacks in one attack window, you can actually increase your DPS by just spamming fast attacks instead. In this scenario, the only way that this method of strong attacks wins out is if you can land that perfect crit in the time window, because if it is not a perfect crit, you will have very little time, if any, to set up for a parry. There is an alternative way to produce strong attacks, but it requires a little more effort. If you swipe back and forth, similar to how you probably produce fast attacks, but slow enough that the attacks register as strong, you can actually significantly reduce the time between your strong attacks. This takes some practice, but once you get the rhythm down, it can be much more efficient. It can also help you predict enemy swings. The absolute minimum time I have been able to measure between strong attacks is about 20 frames, or about two thirds of a second. But more often, my swings are closer to about 24 to 25 frames, or about 5 sixths of a second. So I will use that number for my damage simulations. Now, if we compare DPS between fast and strong attacks on strong susceptible monsters, strong attacks now clearly win, especially because we can guarantee at least one crit sequence between every monster swing. This approach does take some practice, but the good news is that you don't need to get this down perfectly to defeat two skull monsters. In my previous video, I showed a graphic that provided the minimum scheme that you can use to kill most one and two skull monsters and still comfortably set up parries. You can actually easily accomplish these schemes by spamming, but if you have the patience for it, I recommend working on practicing fitting more strong attacks into your playstyle as you start learning enemy animations, especially in your earlier attack windows for each monster. The reason I recommend this comes right out of my last video in that if you master the pattern for one monster, you essentially master it for all of them. Here are 10 different battles with 10 different two skull monsters. I tried to use the exact same moves and you can see that regardless of the monster or whether or not I had the blacksmith buff, the combo works at least for the first half of each fight. Halfway through each fight, the slight errors in my swipes and differences in damage buffs like the Dawnbringer or the Blacksmith, start showing through. Regardless, with a set pattern, usually if you did the first half well enough, you can be much more conservative in the second half and still take down each monster pretty easily. 
as a side note, I hate fighting giant toads. Now let's look at how the different playstyles I mentioned earlier compare when fighting some of the more straightforward two skull monster types. We'll look at the Howler first. This monster uses the same attack animations as the Chort and Tiger Fiend two skull monsters, as well as the one skull Fiend monster. On the left, we have a fast attack spam playstyle. In the middle, I spam strong attacks with a unidirectional swipe, and on the right is the higher effort back and forth strong swipe playstyle. Whatever your preference, it's possible to slay these guys with any of these playstyles, as long as you have the parries down. So take your pick and master it. One important difference, however, is that in the more efficient strong attack playstyle, we end the fight with more health, meaning we had enough DPS to kill the monster in one less attack window. For now, this really only gives you extra brownie points to brag about, but eventually it may become a new normal if Spokos decides to add stronger enemies in the future. After this video, I will also be publishing an extra clip with commentary where I use this pattern to take down some legendary monsters without any consumables or fancy equipment. So check that out if that's something you're interested in learning how to do. Here's another example against the Royal Arrakis. I can't stress enough that it isn't necessary to land every attack perfectly in these fights. If you look closely, I pretty often land a fast attack when I mean to land a strong attack. But once you can get your early patterns down, you can easily deal with accidental diversions from your pattern and even compensate by playing more conservatively in the later parts of each fight and still be very successful. There is a common situation that can occur in monsters with long attack animations like the Leshen or the Leecher. You will almost inevitably run into the situation where you interrupt an enemy's attack animation with a perfect critical or a sign. In these types of monsters, it can actually hurt your overall performance if it switches to a fast attack. So watch for that and be ready to parry. Okay, so what did we learn? For one, there are many ways to play this game. The important thing is to find a way that works for you and to put some thought into how your playstyle fits into the shared monster attack windows. If you're like me, you may have been performing your strong attacks in an inefficient way. You can still be successful this way, but it can be fun to explore your options and improve your game. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe to see more videos like this. If there's something you'd like to see in the next one, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, good luck out there witchers, and happy hunting! I'll see you in the next one.